Hey, welcome back everyone. Thank you so much for once again joining me today. So in today's video, I would like to focus a little bit on the habits of the successful people. So these are the morning routines that every successful individual has as part of their morning routine. And so today I'm going to focus on five specific individuals and then just share with you a little bit about what I learned from some of those habits. And at the end of the video, I'll share some of the habits that I also, the morning routines that I implemented myself as well. But with that being said, you know, the purpose of this channel is just to give you some value, some content, something of value that may serve you in the process or anyone that you may know. So as always, feel free to subscribe, you know, let me know what type of videos you would like to see and how that can bring you some value as well. All of the social media, the links is going to be down below. Forget, don't forget to subscribe and then just follow us on all the uh, social medias on Instagram as well. So with that being said, without further ado, let's get right into it and let's see what this successful individuals has, has their morning routines goes on. Okay, so the first person I want to focus on is The Rock. Who doesn't know The Rock, right? It's Dwayne The Rock Johnson. He's famously known for the wrestling times that he had during the early 2000s. So now he's a successful entrepreneur. He has been in a lot of movies. And, you know, I, it just got to me because he's, been, he's become one of the public figures, one of the most successful figures out here in the world, actually, not just in the United States, just in the entire world. And he actually now owns a company of tequila and it's called Terramana, Terramana Tequila. He's constantly putting content on social media, on his Instagram, him traveling to Guadalajara, Mexico, where he owns this company of Terramana. If you have not tried the tequila, very good tequila, but we're not here to talk about his tequila. We're just here to talk about some of the habits that he has, some of the morning routines. The Rock likes to wake up at four o'clock in the morning. He likes to do so because what he likes to call, this is the time when everybody else is asleep. So I get to get up and I get to dominate. Everybody is asleep. There's nothing going on. Everybody is in their pile. You know, you have about two, three, four, four more hours of sleep. He likes to get up at four o'clock in the morning. He actually works out from four o'clock when he wakes up, he likes to drink some coffee. At 4.30, 4.45, he's working out. He's doing some cardio and he likes to do so until maybe six o'clock, 6.15 in the morning. He likes to do that every day for an hour, hour and a half. Then after that, he takes a shower. Obviously he gets, he gets on his truck because he likes to drive big trucks and then he heads into the office. It takes courage to wake up at four o'clock in the morning. I'm not there yet as far as waking up that early, but man, waking up at four o'clock in the morning, just having that sense of domination that you're up before everybody else while the entire world is asleep, you already up dominating and getting ready to implement your value and contribute to society. This is what The Rock does and this is how he maintains himself. Obviously, he says that diet is a big part of his routine. So The Rock, you know, successful entrepreneur, four o'clock in the morning, works out for an hour, hour and a half every single day. Big, big, big guy. So very good morning routine from The Rock. Okay, the second person that I really studied and I really like to his morning routines, that's Arnold Schwarzenegger. Everybody knows Arnold Schwarzenegger as their Terminator. He actually served here in the state of California as the governor from 2002 to 2011, I believe. What he likes to do is he likes to wake up at four o'clock in the morning as well. He likes to read articles and he likes to read the newspapers as well. He says that six hours of sleep is good enough. And he jokes about, you know, if six hours is not good enough, fall asleep faster, sleep faster. But essentially what he does is he goes, he goes to bed at 10 o'clock at night and he likes to wake up at four o'clock in the morning, read articles, newspapers, and then he likes to ride his bike by 6 a.m. He goes out and then he comes back out to his house, gets, takes a shower, and then he eats some breakfast, and then he heads out to the office. So again, another person that likes to wake up at four o'clock in the morning. And then you can see a correlates already from the two people that I talked about, The Rock and Arnold. Two very successful people, right? They're, they're both 
huge in working out in their diet. Obviously, Arnold was one of the first figures in in the in the industry when bodybuilding uh, was coming up in the 60s and the 70s. So that is what Arnold is known. He's also known for his all of the movies that he made during the early 1980s, 1990s. He was also the governor, like I said, but uh, four o'clock in the morning, you can see the correlation there between The Rock and, four, and, and, and Arnold waking up at four o'clock in the morning and exercising for about an hour and a half. Huge, huge, huge routine. It takes a lot of guts, like I said. And so, Arnold, man, you're one, one of the big figures that we all know around the world. Hasta la vista, baby. Okay, the next person, one of my favorite one of my favorite entrepreneurs in the world. He's actually a big, big public figure, Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins, he runs over 60 companies, I believe, net worth over 400, maybe half a billion dollars right now. Very successful, one of the first coaches that invented the coaching in the country. Now everybody calls himself a coach, a coach for this, a coach for that, a coach for this. But Tony Robbins was actually the first, if not one of the first, individuals who actually became a coach. He's, he coached uh, from uh, Mandela to Bill Clinton. I mean, he has coached athletes, uh, billionaires, all kinds of individuals around the world. And, and actually to get a coaching from Tony Robbins, it cost him about a million dollars, I believe, for, for, for an hour to sit down with him and actually get a coaching from him. But what he likes to do in the morning, he, li he likes to wake up no no specific time from him because he's always traveling and he likes to jump in the jacuzzi as soon as he wakes up. It loosens up the muscles that he's got. He also likes to plunge into this cold plunger. The cold plunger is about seven degrees. It doesn't matter if it's hot, if it's summer, if it's spring, or if it's winter, or if it's snowing. He'll walk himself out to the plunger. He'll plunge himself in this cold water for, I want to say about 30, 45 seconds and he comes out. What that does is like, he, he likes to call it, it just, it connects your brain. It just, it just shakes you up from your comfortable zone to a very uncomfortable and then he just sets, it just sets him up for the day. So he likes, after that, he likes to prime his body for 10 minutes. He likes to call it that if you don't have 10 minutes to prime your body, you don't have a life. And what part of the uh, 10 minute priming includes is three minutes for breathing. It's a breathing exercise that you can actually uh, look up in YouTube, but what he does is just, you know, calls the energy from, from, from the universe and then it just starts taking deep breaths. And after those three minutes are over, gratitude, three minutes in gratitude, being grateful, not just for, for the big things in life, but also the, the, the little things. He likes to be grateful for the car that he drives, the road that he's in, just being grateful for any little thing because what that does, it just allows your brain to start rewiring and start acknowledging the fact that you're grateful for even the little things because you hear that often, be grateful for what you have, be grateful for that, be grateful that you don't have, you, you have this and you know, they don't have that. But it really takes more than that. It takes the brain to actually settle and to just kick the neurons in your brain to actually start, you know, being aware of the fact that you can be grateful. And so he likes to practice that. It's, it, it, it just takes practice. So he does three minutes. After that, he does three minutes of gold and gra goals and gratitude. And the, what this does is, and then not just the goals for the days, he puts himself for goals six months ahead, 12 months ahead. And he just likes to feel the sense that he is done him, that they're done completely. So what he does is while he's breathing, while he's exercising, his mind and his spirit goes into that moment as if it's already done and complete. So he practices the feeling of already being done and that's what I have. And so it just gives him that sense of fulfillment because he likes to call it is success without fulfillment, it's the ultimate failure. Let me repeat that again. Success without fulfillment, it's the ultimate failure. Meaning that if you're successful, but you're not fulfilled for the things that you have in life, that is the ultimate failure. So he likes to practice that every single morning. And, and that, 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 is, that is why he is who he is. A big, big, big guy, but with a massive heart. It's one of my favorite guys. And Tony Robbins has been a great mentor for myself. 
So those are the habits for Tony Robbins. Hi, I'm Mark Cuban, and this is everything I do in a day. Okay, so the next person, Mark Cuban. A lot of people know Mark Cuban as the owner of the Mavericks, the Dallas Mavericks, that is the, the team from the NBA. He actually owns a lot of companies, and he's actually one of the figures out in the, the show called Shark. And so what Mark Cuban does is he wakes up at 6.30 in the morning. While he's still in bed, he reads his emails. He likes to get through the emails early in the morning because for him, it's just a way to get rid of the garbage, get rid of the, the stuff that's gonna hold him back. So at 6.30 in the morning, while he's still in bed, he likes to do so. After that, he likes to head to the kitchen and get some coffee. And also he likes to look at the news and what's happening in the market. What are the tariffs? You know, how's the stock market doing? Because like, like how he says it, he owns a lot of companies that, that involve being in the stock market. So he likes to keep track of that. After that, he, he likes to drop off his daughter at school. That's one of the things that he loves to do. He, every, every morning he likes to drop her off and Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays, he likes to play basketball. Those are the days that, you know, he likes to play basketball by 9.30 in the morning. Again, he's also reading through his emails. He's, uh, he's, he's getting rid of the, all, the, all those emails. And then uh, what he also likes to do is that on certain occasions, if it's an important day, he likes to wear a blue t-shirt. Not just a regular t-shirt, but anything that has color blue. I guess that is one of the colors that for him are very important. So anything, any day that he has a big meeting, blue color is what you're gonna see him with. So those are the habits of Mark Cuban. So in a long runaround way, now you know exactly what I do every single day. Okay, the last person that I really love the habits and the morning routines that he's got, it's Jim Quick. Jim Quick is known for the book that he wrote, Limitless. And he's also a brain coach. He likes to study the brain, how the brain acts, how the brain reacts, what can we do to trigger the brain, to manipulate the brain for the good things that is, and you know, implement new habits. So what he likes to do in the mornings is, as soon as he wakes up, he likes to remember his dreams. How cool is that? Wake up in the morning and try to remember your dreams because a lot of the times when we wake up in the morning, we forget about our dreams. But what Jim Quick does, it's, it's super powerful. He likes to remember the dreams that he's got. And because the mind is very unconscious at that moment, so by, by him, looking to remember and getting those uh, dreams uh, back to his conscious mind, it's super powerful for him. Um, also, he likes to make his bed in the morning and he believes that having a clean environment is what's gonna, is, it's what's gonna set you up for su success. And also what he likes to do is he likes to drink a lot of water. A lot of water simply because the brain is 80% water. It's one of the smallest part of our bodies, but it's actually the biggest when it comes to functioning in our, in our bodies. So he also likes to drink a lot of water because throughout the end, throughout the night, by the, by the time you wake up in the morning, you're dehydrated. So drinking a lot of water replenishes your brain and allows you to have a conscious, a clean conscious. He likes to brush his teeth. Now you might say brushing his teeth, like, how, how does that even apply? What that, what he does is he likes to brush his teeth with the opposite hand that he normally does it with. So for example, I'm, I'm right-handed. I'm brushing my teeth every morning with the right hand. And I've done this and, and, it's, and, it's, and it's super tricky. And I challenge you to try it. Brush your teeth with the opposite hand. It just, it, it, it just, it just connects your neural uh, cells in your brain to, it, it just makes you uncomfortable and it just puts you in a position where like, well, okay, you know, it just gets you out of your comfort zone and it just puts you into a new rhythm. So it triggers the brain to be conscious. So brushing his teeth or try, trying to write with the, with the opposite hand, he likes to do the opposite or what he normally does it with. And that is, that is, that is, that is super powerful, by the way. Um, by the time he gets done with all of that, he likes to drink some tea. He likes to drink some tea while he's writing his goals. He likes to write his goals and then also write something of gratitude because again, drinking the type of tea that he likes to drink allows him to just relax, uh, puts himself in a state that gives him clarity of what he really wants to achieve out of life. So I believe that is, that is, that is super, super powerful. And to be quite honest, those are some of, 
some of the habits that I, some of the morning routines that I, that really trigger me. And like I was telling you at the beginning from the first two, from The Rock, and then also Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? The, both of them, bodybuilders, big, big, big guys, uh, waking up at four o'clock in the morning, successful business people, and exercising for an hour and a half every single day. Right? They both like to drink a little bit of coffee while, you know, bef The Rock before he starts working out and then Arnold while he's reading the newspapers. Tony Robbins, right? He, he really has no time waking up and, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just, he's just, he has done it for so long that it's just wired, that it's just part of who he is. Let me tell you some, some of the habits that I have implemented in some of the morning routines. What I like to do in the mornings is, I like to wake up at six o'clock in the morning. I'm really shooting for 5 a.m. And, and, and I know I'm gonna get there, but for now, six o'clock in the morning. This year, actually, I said that I was gonna get up before the sun came up, and that's exactly what I've been doing. So it took me a little, a little bit of time to actually get used to it, especially when we changed times, because I was getting up when the sun was up, so when we changed times, it threw me off, so now I had to set the alarm. But now today, actually, I'm waking up at 5.30, and the reason why that's happening very automatic, because I've been writing it on my, on my journal. But after I get up at six o'clock in the morning, what I like to do is I like to grab my phone and I like to look at the stock market. I, I'm very big on being involved in the stock market. I also like to be very involved and just see, see, see what's going on in, 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 in the real estate market. So I grab my phone, I read for five minutes, maybe three minutes, three to five minutes, just very quickly. After that, every single day, every single day, no excuses, I like to shower. I like to shower every single morning. Uh, that is part of my routine uh, when, when, I, when I get up. By that time, I like to come downstairs into my office. I like to do the breathing exercise that I was just talking to you about Tony Robbins. So what I do is I, I put on my earphones, I sit in a quiet place, and I like to do the breathing exercise. So how I, how I started is we do 10, three sets of 10 breathing exercises. And we deep breathe, uh, we, deep take deep breaths and as we're doing that you know and i'm closing my eyes and i'm just calling you know love gratitude compassion and i'm just taking deep breaths 30 breaths three repetitions so after that that takes us three minutes after that i think of three three things that i'm really grateful for three things that i'm, I'm super super grateful so every day there are some things that automatically come in my head and i'm very grateful for that so i see a correlate a correlation to what are the things that I'm grateful for, but I'm always looking, I'm training my brain to look for the little things, not just the big things that I'm grateful for. And so I'm always looking for little things that I can be grateful for. So every day I look for something new. That's three minutes after that, we do the exercise of three goals, three outcomes in our lives that we think of them as, that I think of them as done, completely done. I while the eyes are still closed, I put myself in that state and I like to put myself in that moment that I have already done it. The goals are complete, they're done. And so the, feel, the feeling that I get from that, it's, it's super powerful. So three, three goals. After I do that, I like to write down my goals for just 10, 10 goals of the day. And there's a saying, right, that I, that, I, that I say it. If you're gonna lie to yourself that you can or cannot do something, you might as well tell yourself a good lie, a future lie that you may not believe it right now, that even when you say it to yourself, when you tell yourself that lie, when you're saying, I'm gonna make X amount of money, or I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna live here, I'm gonna go there, that feeling feels like, like you're lying to yourself, like you shouldn't be saying that. But actually writing your goals and putting them in paper, it just takes your brain to a whole new level. You start seeing them, not in your phone, actually writing them down and that's what I do. I write down my goals. I like to write them. I like to think of three things that I can accomplish, that I'm going to be accomplishing within the next 12 to 18, maybe 24 months. Once I do that, I like to hop on the computer and I look at my calendar, what I have for the day. But before I get to, 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 to the breathing exercise, I like to turn on the coffee. What I'm getting into practice now is, is leaving the coffee ready ready to go the water and then the coffee already in the pot. So in the morning when I come down, I just click it, it's on, I come over here and then I do my breathing exercise for 10 minutes, 
Then I write down my goals for 10 minutes. After I write down my goals for 10 minutes, I go get a cup of coffee, look at my calendar or what I have for the day. And it takes me about maybe five, 10 minutes to do so. At that point, you know, my kids are coming down, get them ready to school, feed them, and then take my son to school. So that is my morning routine. Not very much different than what I explained to you from some of this successful. Yes, they wake up at four. Yes, they exercise for an hour and a half. We all have morning routines and it's just about getting them over and over, getting them done over and over and over and over again until it just, it just becomes part of you. They say it takes 21 days for a habit to be completely adapted to you, to be part of you. So for me, I, I, I didn't keep track of those 21 days, but I can tell you that I've been doing them all year long at towards the end of last year, actually. But this year, very consistent because why? Because I said to myself that I was going to do it and I've been doing it. I've been pressing to my goals. I've been writing my goals. My brain, my brain starts to believe it. There are some goals that my brain still cannot believe and it feels weird as I'm writing these goals. But I know that the more that I write them, the more that I'm pressing, the more that I can attract that person, the more that I can attract that relationship, the more that I can attract that contact. And it's just getting me closer to my outcome. Very powerful. Okay, so with that being said, those are some of the habits of the highly successful entrepreneurs that most of you already know. My takeaway from that is journaling. Journaling everything that you do, everything that you want to do out of life. Also gratitude. Gratitude just gives you that sense of fulfillment because what is, what is to have a million, $10 million, $30 million, a billion dollars for that matter, if you're not successful, if, if you're not fulfilled. So being successful without fulfillment is the ultimate failure, like my good old friend Tony Robbins likes to call it. Also for me is a clean environment as well. Clean environment because I say, right, the way you do anything is the way you do everything. I don't know who said that, but let me repeat that again. The way I do anything is the way I do everything. So if I'm a sloppy guy, you know, in the morning, guess what? I'm going to show all sloppy to work. If I'm clean and I'm organized and I'm disciplined with my own personal stuff, that is how, we, how I'm going to show up to my client. That's how I'm going to show up to my office. That's how I'm going to show up to my family. So the way I do anything is the way I do everything. Those are my key takeaways from learning and understanding the, what it takes to have a morning routine. So what is yours? What is, what is your morning routine? I'm curious to know that because everybody has a morning routine and not just because they have something that you don't have makes them better than yours. Everybody has a morning routine. Some people like to run. Some people like to sing. Some people like to drink coffee. For me, another you know, habit that I have is I have to shower two times a day. I cannot live my day if I don't shower two times a day. So one in the morning, one in the night. I like to, in the morning, I like to just you know, cleanse my body. At the end of the night, I like to clean my body and then just go to sleep very fresh. But what is your, your routine? I'm curious to know. Because like I said, we all have that morning routine that sets our date apart from the rest, from the rest of the world. So very curious to know. With that being said, thank you so much for allowing me to share this with you. This is, this is, uh, this, this habits, like I shared, uh, super powerful. Please, please, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Let me know what other videos out you would like to hear. You know, I know I like to do a lot about, you know, what the successful are doing, some of the reviews of the books that I have done, something of value. But if there's any, anything else that you would like me to share, please feel free to let me know. All of the social media is going to be down below. Don't forget to follow. Don't forget to subscribe. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everybody.